a haunted house. It seems like a fun idea for a date, although the model is the type to jump at everything. He knows everyone in the fake blood and clown makeup are just out-of-work actors or students looking to make some easy money, but any loud screams are enough to get him leaping out of his own skin. Then again, he expects that's part of his date's plan, get him scared so he seeks shelter in his arms. It's quite sweet, actually. So he agrees. The place is hardly the stuff of nightmares. In fact, it's all pretty homesprung, and being there with company makes it easier to giggle at all the half-baked attempts to incite scares. The distinctly ketchup-scented blood stains are a particular highlight that leaves the model and his date in stitches. Then they spot a hall of mirrors and can't resist heading inside. It's even cheaper than they're expecting, multiple standing mirrors that seem to have been taken straight out of people's homes and set up in an easy-to-navigate maze. Still, it ends up being fun for the most part, until the model spots something in his reflection in one of the mirrors, a tiny blemish. That wasn't there yesterday, and he's certain of it. His whole job is centered around how he looks, but he tries to brush it off. After all, even he gets insecure about his appearance from time to time, it happens to everyone. But in the next mirror, it seems to look even worse. Maybe it's the lighting, he thinks. Then he starts to worry. Has his date noticed? It plays on his mind, and the rest of the way through the hall of mirrors, he avoids looking at his reflection. A few days later and he's sitting in the makeup chair, getting ready for a photo shoot. He doesn't dare open his eyes, trusting the makeup artists to cover up the things he's been seeing on his face every time he looks in the mirror. He's tried to cancel the shoot, calling his manager and telling her that he just can't be on camera right now. But she comes racing over to his apartment to get a look at him for herself and tells him she can't see anything wrong, to just get over himself and not be a diva. He tries to settle into the familiarity of the photo shoot. The outfit changes, the rapid flashing of the cameras, while he tries desperately not to let his concern show on his face. A few times it slips out, the cameraman telling him to look less worried. It's hard to be, especially with how he thinks he must look. Seeing the photos afterwards, it's even worse than he thought. It barely looks like him. The person in the pictures is unrecognizable to the model. He argues with the cameraman and manager, telling them they need to Photoshop the images. Neither of them can see what's wrong with them. A few more days pass, and the model is cowering in his apartment. The thing he sees in the mirror doesn't look like him anymore. He doesn't even look human. He's seen it everywhere, looking back at him in the glass pane of windows, out of the corner of his eye in the TV, shuffling in the place where his own reflection should be. It creeps into every photo, takes his place, standing in the spots he's supposed to be. The models even started having nightmares about seeing whatever he's become. There's something very wrong with all this, and it all started in that hall of mirrors. Held in a secure storage locker at Site-19, SCP-4682 is to remain wrapped in an opaque material at all times, in accordance with its special containment procedures. Under no circumstances are any personnel permitted to view SCP-4682 directly. If they do, then they likely won't like what they see. SCP-4682 is, or at least appears to be, a common silver and glass mirror. Upon closer inspection, there appears to be nothing immediately or obviously anomalous about the mirror, even down to having been constructed with entirely ordinary materials. The anomalous properties of SCP-4682 will only manifest from the point a person observes their own reflection within the mirror itself, after which point any individual that is subjected to the effects of SCP-4682 must avoid any and all reflective surfaces effective immediately after looking at SCP-4682. An affected individual will be advised by the Foundation to avoid being depicted in any and all visual mediums, including never having their picture taken or allowing themselves to be recorded on video, either through the use of digital or film cameras. Psychologists working for the firm Schuyler & Crane Psychiatry, a front for the SCP Foundation's Psychological Research and Analysis Department, will conduct therapy sessions with affected individuals on a monthly to weekly schedule, determined on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the severity of the side effects they experience after looking directly at SCP-4682. This, of course, leaves the lingering question of what exactly happens when a person observes their reflection in SCP-4682. Do they find themselves trapped in an inescapable mirror dimension? Does it 
impart an anomalous effect that removes them from photographs, leading them to question their own sanity and existence. Not quite. But it's arguably just as cruel. Any human being that observes their own reflection on SCP-4682's surface will experience a permanent and irreversible shift in their perception. Whenever viewing themselves in SCP-4682, they will immediately notice physical differences that are not actually present on their real face or body, but they only appear in the anomalous mirror. These have been known to include a mix of the following discrepancies and reflections. For one, they might perceive themselves as having incorrect proportions of the face, such as their eyes being further apart or closer together than they are in reality. This can also extend to the proportions of the rest of their body too, as the reflection might depict them as being inaccurately taller or shorter than they actually are, or show them having a significantly different body mass or shape. Many of the D-Class test subjects deployed during experimentation with SCP-4682 have also reported seeing various blemishes and skin conditions on the mirror's inaccurate reflections, from acne to facial scars, eczema to even conditions as severe as first-degree burns, all of which are not present on the test subjects' actual faces. Dental hygiene of the test subjects is often depicted as being much worse in their SCP-4682 reflection than it is in real life, with yellowed or rotting teeth appearing, as well as cavities that do not correspond with the subject's actual dental records. Reflected in SCP-4682 are also often the addition of facial features that are considered, at least by conventional standards, to be unattractive. Some test subjects have reported seeing themselves sporting unibrows or uneven facial hair regardless of gender. The same also further extends to the rest of their body, with numerous instances of D-Class seeing themselves with excessive body hair that isn't present outside of the reflection. Following a person's direct exposure to the mirror's surface, the effect of SCP-4682 will become unavoidable. While not possible for anyone else to observe any noticeable change in said person, they themselves will notice the perceived imperfections in their appearance in other reflective surfaces. This extends not only to conventional non-anomalous mirrors, but also to television, computer or cell phone screens, windows and other glass surfaces, as well as anything that is polished sufficiently enough to produce a reflection. Additionally, these inaccurate anomalous differences to an affected person's appearance will be present in any photographs or video footage of them, meaning that there is virtually no proven way to convince them that these imperfections are actually present beyond pointing this out. The differences to a person's appearance are not present when they are viewed by others or when they view themselves with the naked eye. However, naturally, it will be impossible for them to view their own face without the assistance of a reflective surface, which will always depict them as having inaccurate imperfections that are not actually physically present. As if triggering this perceptual shift wasn't bad enough, SCP-4682's anomalous effect is also cumulative, as in, it only gets worse every time a person sees themselves again. When viewing their reflection after exposure to SCP-4682, whether using the anomalous mirror, a normal one, or any other method, another new imperfection will seemingly have appeared. Any reflective surface or method of visual recording around them will appear to make more and more differences present in their appearance. Anyone around that observes the altered reflection of the affected person, particularly on a surface or through photographs, will also be able to view the same imperfections that they perceive. However, they will be aware that these are not actually present when they view the person directly. There is currently no known way to circumvent or cure the perceptual anomaly caused by SCP-4682 or negate the lasting effect of it. Even the administering of memory-altering amnestics have no effect, as even if an affected subject forgets what they originally saw in SCP-4682, or even forgets the moment they looked into it to begin with, in some cases, using amnestics to treat exposure to SCP-4682's anomalous perceptual alteration can irreparably affect a person's view of themselves. One member of D-Class that was given amnestics after viewing SCP-4682 began believing the imperfections they saw in their reflection had always been part of their natural appearance. For a time, this led to a degree of acceptance in this individual. Being unable to recall their encounter with SCP-4682 meant they had no inclination that the reflection had previously appeared any differently before being altered by the mirror. However, they began to notice additional inaccuracies when subsequently viewing their reflection in the mirror above the faucet within their living quarters at the Foundation. The cumulative nature of SCP-4682 perceptual anomaly gradually led to this affected D-Class developing outlandish theories about their own identity. 
One such train of thought revolved around the belief that the Foundation had replaced their real self with some kind of clone, believing themselves to be a replica of the original, inaccurately mimicking their appearance and possessing all their memories. After being dissuaded of this belief by Foundation psychiatrists, the affected D-Class later adopted a new theory that the Foundation had been intentionally applying sophisticated visual effects makeup and prosthetics to his face and body each day until he noticed. When they raised this theory with his fellow D-Class personnel, many dismissed it, saying that they looked no different from when they'd first arrived in Foundation custody. This then led to a growing mistrust of other members of D-Class. The affected subject believing that those around them were secretly privy to the continuing changes they noticed in their reflection, and had been instructed to lie by the Foundation. Gradually, the SCP-4682 affected D-Class developed an uncontrollable paranoia towards all Foundation staff. Unbeknownst to anyone else at Site-19, they began to believe the SCP Foundation had intentionally stolen their face and was deliberately changing their appearance every day as some means of sadistic, psychological torture. At one point, the fact that this had been the side effect of looking at an anomalous mirror was revealed by their appointed psychologist, but this explanation was rejected by the D-Class as being nothing more than an attempt by the Foundation to mislead them. Having been drawing up an escape plan in secret, the affected individual eventually experienced a psychotic break and shattered the mirror in their holding cell, both to prevent them from being able to observe the continuously worsening changes in their reflection and in order to hide one of the sharper fragments of glass on their person, in order to use it as a makeshift weapon. During recreational time, the D-Class caught a member of Foundation security by surprise and took them hostage, threatening their safety with the shard of the mirror. Holding it to the throat of their hostage, the D-Class was still able to catch momentary glimpses of their altered reflection in the glass. Additional Foundation security officers attempted to intervene, but could not get close enough to the D-Class without risking potential harm to their captured colleague. When asked by officers attempting to peacefully negotiate, the SCP-4682 affected D-Class made continuous requests for the Foundation to return their real face. Further attempts were made to explain the effects of SCP-4682 to the D-Class, however, they once again refused to believe what they were being told. Growing more and more agitated, witnesses state that the affected individual caught another glimpse of themselves reflected in one of the facility's tinted windows. Upon seeing further alterations to their reflection, they became enraged and released their hostage before attempting something drastic with the mirror shard to get rid of this false face. They were subsequently transferred to the medical wing of Site-19, where they remained alive but unconscious for several weeks. As a form of compensation for the mental anguish imposed on them by being made to look at SCP-4682 and then being forced to forget about it, the Foundation offered to perform facial reconstruction surgery on the affected D-Class, as well as applying skin grafts to repair some of the lasting facial trauma. However, the D-Class instead refused opting to keep their face wrapped in bandages and sterile wound dressing indefinitely, requesting that the Foundation instead develop some method of preventing them from ever seeing their reflection again. At present, there are several proposals to re-engineer the technology behind the scramble goggles to serve this purpose. One includes developing electronic contact lenses that either blur or completely remove an individual's reflection from their vision in real time. However, these proposals are still awaiting review and approval by Foundation higher-ups. A number of other D-Class personnel used during testing of the anomalous mirror have reported suffering major psychological difficulty after witnessing their altered reflections. In particular, those who have seen the cumulative effects of multiple imperfections being added thanks to SCP-4682. Many report being unable to recall what they originally looked like before seeing the inaccurate changes in their reflections with some even developing severe depression, anxiety, and insecurity connected to their appearance. In addition to this, there have been numerous documented cases of test subjects suffering from severe body dysmorphia following testing with the object. Given that this is one of the more common outcomes that can be caused by looking at SCP-4682, and in order to discourage personnel from doing so, the anomalous mirror is often widely referred to simply as the body dysmorphia mirror. The Foundation first encountered the mirror while investigating a missing persons case in Broken Bow, Oklahoma. A civilian, referred to simply as Rob, had reported to police that his boyfriend had been out of contact for a concerning amount of time, and an investigation into his whereabouts was subsequently launched. While this would typically be solely the concern of local law enforcement, 
a member of an SCP Foundation mobile task force happened to be operating undercover within the area's police force. This agent belonged to MTF IOTA-10. Members of this task force do not strictly operate as a cohesive unit, but are instead a number of undercover operatives spread out across various international, federal, and local law enforcement agencies. This includes the Central Intelligence Agency, Federal Bureau of Investigation, Ministry of Intelligence, and various police departments. The primary goal of this mobile task force is transferring potentially anomalous evidence recovered during investigations into Foundation hands, as well as reporting any anomalies discovered in connection to criminal acts to the SCP Foundation. From there, they then allow Foundation response or containment teams to step in and take over jurisdiction of these cases from local law enforcement or federal agencies. This has led to MTF IOTA-10 being more colloquially known by their nickname, the Damn Feds. One of these damn feds within the local Oklahoma Police Department investigating the disappearance of Rob's missing boyfriend was present when they searched his apartment. Immediately, this embedded Foundation operative noticed something was wrong. All of the mirrors, screens, windows, every reflective surface in the apartment seemed to have been shattered or painted over, except for one, SCP-4682, which was laying intact on the carpet of the bedroom. Even worse, the cause of the boyfriend's disappearance quickly became apparent upon the discovery of a mixture of Jack Daniels and cough medicine next to a body with a note. Believing the apartment to have been the site of a potential anomalous incursion, the undercover MTF IOTA-10 operative contacted his superiors at the SCP Foundation and requested that members of Mobile Task Force Ada-10 be dispatched to assess the situation. The operative was commended for making an accurate assessment of the situation, especially in requesting MTF Ada-10, otherwise known as See No Evil. Of all the Foundation's numerous deployable task forces, Ada-10 specializes in the investigation, acquisition, and containment of anomalies that cause visual cognition hazards or mimetic effects. In short, anything that cannot or should not be directly observed in order to be safely handled. Through the use of anomalous means available to only MTF Ada-10, they were able to safely secure SCP-4682 and bring it to Foundation containment. Also recovered from the scene in the apartment was the note left by Rob's boyfriend. This note revealed little about how he had come to have SCP-4682 in his possession, nor shed any light on its origins or when he first began to notice its anomalous effects. However, it did contain insights as to how the mirror functioned through the harrowing testimony of the man who had been found dead alongside it. He had reportedly started seeing his altered reflection more frequently, so much so that it had started affecting his day-to-day -day life. He recalled accidentally colliding with his neighbor's car after he hadn't been using his vehicle's rearview mirror because he couldn't stand the sight of his own eyes looking back at him. It had seemingly become so bad that he had smashed the bathroom mirror in his apartment, unable to look into it for more than a second. However, still being able to see himself in the broken fragments, he tried throwing them away, only to still catch his inaccurate reflection on the metallic surface of his dishwasher. Every time a reflective surface showed imperfections on his face thanks to SCP-4682, he destroyed it, smashing his phone when he saw his reflection in the glass screen protector. According to his note, he even took a hammer to a hand mirror that Rob had given him as a gift, destroying it so thoroughly that there were only tiny shards and splinters of glass left and he could still see himself in those, too. Desperation had long since set in, and he was considering somehow inducing blindness in himself, before eventually deciding that there was only one way to be rid of the sight of his own face for good. He had been seeing himself with crooked teeth and chewed fingernails, and had started to believe that Rob's feelings had enabled him to look at his boyfriend with rose-tinted glasses. He felt unworthy of his partner's love, and felt that Rob deserved better, unaware that the imperfections he was seeing in himself weren't really there, and it only appeared as a result of looking into SCP-4682. This tragic outcome of the effects of the body dysmorphia mirror are a large part of the reason that the SCP Foundation have long since discontinued testing with it, opting to keep it in storage where it can no longer hurt the way people look at themselves. Check out the Dr. Bob Patreon and become a junior researcher today. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-987, Mirrors of Death, Gruesome Gallery.